Hey guys, I just finished a great conversation from my podcast channel with a new friend of mine called Glow at Hanmore. Glow is an online educator, she is an author, and she is a travel blogger, a serial entrepreneur, and she has a very distinct, clear, important voice into the whole question of racism right now that we are battling with all over the world. She has had articles featured in Oprah's Magazine, Forbes Magazine, uh, Condé Nast, BuzzFeed, and others. She is a fantastic human being. You're going to love this interview. Don't forget to comment and subscribe to my podcast channel. Thank you. Before you get started on today's podcast with Paul Scanlon, we just wanted to let you know that he now has a free course available to you. If you head over to paulscanlon.com forward slash free course, you'll be able to sign up to his video series called The Five Behaviors of Successful People. We hope that this course adds value to your life. Now enjoy the podcast. Having so much response in such a short time, I think you said like 150,000 plus new followers inside a month or so. Yeah, it's insane. <laughs> how, how has that affected you and your life and what you do? Obviously now you have a voice that you feel responsible to keep putting out there. Um, these people are following you because of your voice into that, but I know you talk about other things as well. So how do you balance that responsibility to keep having that voice, which I think is brilliant, and do the other things that a lot of people perhaps don't know you do? That's such a great question. And I would always tell like my mentees and students that I coach, the content that you create today is the content that converts tomorrow. So no matter whether I had 10 followers or a thousand, I was preaching a message of positivity and joy. And that's always been kind of like the overarching theme of my page. So when people come away with this level of positivity and compassion and love, that's always been my message. It doesn't matter yeah. if it's the subject or the topic, it's like that's the underlying theme. Um, I think with, you know, it's been what, 80 days since George Floyd. Um, yeah. And so I've definitely, I, I was really heavy on, on, on just pushing education, education, education on the black experience towards allies. And then I, I started to kind of sprinkle it out and, and, and or sprinkle in entrepreneurship and uh, spirituality, faith, life advice, you know, because when you understand that every single human is triggered or traumatized or both, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you get to have a, a deeper understanding and a deeper level of compassion. And so I wanted people to understand that even if you are learning about you know, black history for the first time. I want you to also learn about, you know, love and compassion and patience, all the things that I'm learning on this journey. And I think the biggest thing that people on Instagram can do is take away the spotlight from themselves. Um, Clay Hebert uh, coined this term, but he coined this term, but he said, you need to stop being like, be a, a learn from me, not a look at me type of mental. Uh, uh, learn uh. from me, don't look at me. And it's like not shining the flashlight on myself, but shining it back on my audience and letting them know how brilliant they are and how they can cope through life and how they can navigate the human experience as messy as it gets. So you developed the idea of white allies and the allyship thing that you do. Did that come out of the awareness that I want to turn this into some form of ongoing engagement in this conversation, especially for white people? It's interesting. I actually, when it happened, I got off of social media for six weeks. I was so like black trauma is another thing, but every time there's another like unjust black murder, like the black community collectively has to grieve because it's just, we see our brothers, our cousins, our fathers and that. So mm -hmm. I was off of social media for six weeks and I was telling some of my students, I was like, you won't see me there for three months. I need to heal. Like I'm just I can't, I need to process the level of hatred that exists in the world because I cannot come on social media and preach a message of love if I don't have that in my heart yet. So I was healing and I, I took six weeks to just process, process, process. <laughs> and again, I'm talking to some of my students and the ones that were black were saying, Glow, like a lot of my white friends are reaching out to me and they're, how are you? Are you okay? How do you feel? And just like, dump emotionally dumping i'm so sorry and now we're having to hold space for their white guilt and our black grieving they're like well, how are you dealing with this and i was like i've literally been ignoring all of them because i'm getting those same messages too and so the first thing i did or the first carousel that i created was like what do you you text your black friends because i was looking out for the black community i was like okay if all of them if if 
all the black people are coming to me saying they're getting all of these text messages from their white friends. Probably a lot of other black people are getting them too. So let me create this template that white people, like if you are about to reach out to your black friends, here is a good base of what to start. It doesn't have to sound robotic, but my goodness, like that there are certain things that when someone is grieving, and again, there's no context of the grief. Like I think white people are just like, oh, well, let me let them know that I'm, I'm thinking of them. And they just dump emotional, emotional. I'm just like, Oof, it's heavy for us. So the first template, the first carousel I created was a template of what do you text your black friends? Interesting because, you know, I, I perceive that as entrepreneurial behavior from you, but it's not necessarily entrepreneur. And I think a lot of people that think about entrepreneurs only think everything that they do has to result in money. Mm. But also, but there are social entrepreneurs, there are people that are entrepreneurial and it's a public service and it's giving something back to people or it's an educational voice, it's an awareness raising voice or it's a voice of protest. But the, 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 but the component parts of it to me are very entrepreneurial. You know, for you, to, for you to decide that's what I should do in this space, for you to know that black people are getting questions from white people and there's no voice into this space, to me is entrepreneurial genius that you're still doing that. And I think I'm saying this because a lot of people think um, they'd love to go viral yeah. Oh, foundation for that to happen. Mm. They hope they'll, you know, put a song on YouTube in the back bedroom and go viral because they hear those stories. Yeah. But, but it could have all stopped. But you were posting stuff anyway, serving people. Then something went viral. And then you went beyond that to turn it into an idea that continued to have life beyond the viral event which I think a lot of people don't understand are the component parts of keeping a thing often alive. It's not just sitting, waiting till another post goes viral, but you staying involved and you, the way your mind works, I think is amazing. And the way entrepreneurs minds work, I think is fascinating to do what you did with it. Thank you. And, and I think what, what's also important to recognize is that, you know, at the time I have a two bedroom apartment in Atlanta and I live by myself. So I was, again, the six weeks off of social media, I was doing a lot of reading, meditating, isolating, like I wasn't texting anyone. I really was just like, I don't have energy to give or pour into anyone because I need to focus on myself, my own healing. So that process of just like being able to cocoon and hide from the world is a privilege, a massive privilege. You have black mothers who are struggling, you know, especially this was during COVID-19 as well, struggling to put food on the table for their kids biting their tongue in professional Zoom meetings with all of their white coworkers. There, there are so many black people that had it, they just had it so much worse off than I did. So I knew as well that like, I was in a, a bubble of privilege to, if, if I continued to just stay silent and hide, you know? So I knew that I had a voice to contribute. I didn't know what that voice would be. And no matter what happens in my life or, you know, what I share, storytelling, and teaching is always at the, is at the base. So yeah, it was one of those things where yeah, I didn't expect it to go viral at all. It was like, here's what I can contribute. I, I can't show my face right now. It probably took me another five, six weeks before I even showed my face on Instagram oh. again. Because I, I was still like crying daily, sporadically busting into tears because I was just like so emotional, constantly triggered. So I was like, okay, with with this graphic design with these carousels i don't have to show my face but i can teach in an effective way and reach a lot of people or just you know reach my community so that was like my way of serving explain carousel posting for a minute Glo, because i know you do that i think it's brilliant and apparently they're much more viewed than posts that are not carousel so is that a um a style that you've got into and adopted and see the value of yeah, it's interesting. So I have a course called Blog Like a Boss. and Called what? Blog Like a Boss. <laughs> okay, Blog Like a Boss. Like it, yeah. Blog Like a Boss. And with my students, I was like, hey, guys, let's host a New Year's Eve, um, or sorry, a, a 2020 social media strategy call. This was in January of 2020. Again, just my way of serving uh, my community or the people mm. that were in my course. And so I hosted this call. 
And it was based off of the research I had done on podcasts, articles, trends. I just kind of like dug deep into research for two weeks on what was going to work in 2020. And on that call, I talked about carousel posts. And I was like, all right, guys, everywhere I, I see this, like everyone is saying that these are going to make sense or these are going to be the next thing to pop in 2020. I don't know how you're going to implement it into your gallery, but play around, experiment. Uh, there's a quote, I think, by Stephen Barlett that says, most experiments fail, but the one that doesn't goes on to define you and your right. Right. And, you know, now that I'm seeing this experiment, because again, I just, I was like, let me put something up because I need to contribute. And I think as well, when you're a creator, you get to a point where you have so much that you want to give and pour into others that it, it, you physically can't hold it in. Even if I wanted to hide anymore, like I knew I had something to contribute. So the carousels basically, um, yeah, so I guess, I don't know if that's the official word for them, but it's a, almost like a slideshow. And it's a way for people to take, because here's the thing, captions aren't pretty to read on Instagram. They're small little black text. And oftentimes people don't know how to uh, put paragraph indentation and spacing in between. So it looks like this big, you know, chunky block text. <laughs> we'll glaze over it quickly. So if you just take your caption and you break it up into 10 slides and you, you know, put it bold, maybe you add some nice colors, a couple, you know, graphic or, or design elements, it just makes it more engaging. Like we're a very visual generation and, and visual society. So um, making information easily digestible makes it more shareable. Do you have a team that help you with that? I am a one woman show and all of wow. like, my, all of my CEO friends are like, Glow, what is wrong with you? Hire someone. <laughs> and it's not that I can't or don't want to. It's just, uh, you know, past trauma with trust and, you know, being created yeah. in the past, you really want to make sure the onboarding process is thorough. And, um, and, and here's something that a lot of people don't talk about is you don't want to hire like followers or readers either like mm -hmm. you really got to hire a third party who knows nothing about your story because mm -hmm. you really have to approach it from like there can't be any type of conflict of interest because it gets really complicated when someone i don't want to say a fan i don't really like that word but you know you really got to make sure you're being careful because people have you know other motives you know when they work for you so I'm really excited for building that dream team. I know it's inevitable, but until then, one woman show, I enjoy creating, I enjoy, you know, running my business and, you know, for now it, it works. I think your social media feed is fantastic. And of course, we'll be drawing attention to that in the podcast, but I think everybody should, it's not just the content, but the way you've done it and the carousel posting um, that may not even occur to people that that is, uh, a varied approach they can have in what they do because as you say um, I mean these days to be honest um, I rarely scroll through my uh, Instagram the people I follow because number one um, it's not who I choose to follow it's full of stuff that algorithms are putting in front of me that I didn't choose to look at yeah. so to scroll through to find the ones you do want to see you better putting a search in for them rather than scrolling through and i don't know what's coming next i follow gary v listen to him um he's quite you know got a finger on the pulse as you know i don't know what's coming next whether people are getting weary of social media or the instagram version of it but i think yours is very fresh very refreshing um are you uh, hopeful have you been encouraged by the response of white people since the death of george floyd yeah you know i I was talking to Gabby Bernstein about this and bless her heart, she was one of the many people who, you know, saw what I was doing and reached out, you know, I don't know if you have read any of her books, but incredible woman and the universe has your back is one of my favorite reads. Mm. And the way she just poured into me and I was telling her, I'm like, you know, I feel a rare permanence at the same time. I know people will get tired of this. Like, you know, so I'm trying to balance my expectations with, you know, gratitude because there are people who are messaging me like, Glow, my, my grandma doesn't like black people. And I showed her your post. And now she's, you know, she's slowly changing her mind. And of course, it's hard to hear these stories. Like, you know, people are being very honest, saying, you know, we think black people are criminals. 
we have never had a good experience of black people. Here's why we don't like black people. And I'm like, okay, guys, calm down. <laughs> you know, but the way they're they're shifting their approach, and I have to understand, especially middle America, where, you know, because I, I, I lived in Kansas for five years, where I think our college, our university had it was like 2% black, 3% black, maybe on like, maybe during Black History Month, we had a couple people sneak in. <laughs> it was not, um, not diverse at all. So you look at the middle of America, the flyover states, as we call it, yeah. very rural, rural areas that just don't have black exposure and their only context of who black people are is, you know, trash media, stereotypical roles, um, the news, oh, black man's robs X, Y, Z. Oh, I knew it. They're all, you know, confirmation mm. bias. Yeah. So um, I think I'm, I'm kind of rambling here, but your question was. <laughs> no, I think um, I'm interested in um, your approach to all this ongoingly. And I was wondering, did you, you know, the global awareness since George Floyd's death amongst white people has been huge, but of course, many of them will fade away as we've talked about before. Right. But I wondered if um, you have felt uh, it's been a larger awareness than ever before in your lifetime. And have you felt generally positive by what you've experienced? Or do you feel it's still very mixed? Um, and the trolls and the negative people are winning the day still? No, 100%. I would definitely say, you know, I talked to my Black friends about this and we're just like, yo, this, this one's different. Like, we're all like, okay. they're, they're actually listening. They're, they're listening, guys. Yeah, and a lot of us also, we feel so liberated because we've been, we've been walking on eggshells about a lot of microaggressions. And now we don't care. We're, we're openly talking about the racist right. things that white people do in in different scenarios and you know we, we would bite our tongue we, we wouldn't dare share those stories because we can get fired we could we'd be yep. not invited to party you know we, we, yeah all, all of that stuff that comes with you know speaking your truth and now that you know a lot of people are getting the context <laughs> of our experience they're like oh okay I, I now see how I've actively played a part in this I now see where I haven't been listening. I haven't been showing up for you. I have been ignoring, you know, when you told me X, Y, Z. So we definitely feel hopeful about this movement. It's, it's been the most, um, it has the most longevity, I think, right now. Because I look at Trayvon Martin. When I think about what my Facebook looked like during Trayvon Martin's uh, death a few years ago, it was so divided. It was so hateful. And People had no, oh, he had a hood. He looked like he was up to no good. Like those were still the comments that were dominating conversations. He, why did he have a hood on? Like if you think that someone wearing a hood is, is justifies their murder, like right. my goodness, you know? So that was what the conversation was before. Now the conversation is like, I, I hear you. I see you. I, now I understand. I'm learning. I'm doing my part. I get it. Where'd you get your energy from, Glow? You have, you have a very, and I don't mean just that you are energetic and upbeat, but you, I think one of the reasons white people would find um, a sense of safety mm. um, and curiosity about you and your social media and your voice is that when I talk your energy, your energy is not judgmental. Uh, it is not negative. It is inclusive. Mm. Um, it is warm, playful. I've seen your uh, posts and, and playfulness, dancing alone, so on and so on. Um, where Have you always been like that? Because I think it's very refreshing and very important for someone that's <laughs> stepping into such a controversial, usually vicious, negative environment of, of, of racism. It's tough. Um, when, when it comes to energy, I think... Uh, you, I can look at my Aries, you know, back because we're both Aries. So we, we definitely have yeah. that free spirited, charming, you know, we're, we're charismatic. But I also think just the self work that I've been doing, and I, I traveled for seven years full time, 81 countries, six continents, on the road constantly, meeting people, exchanging energies, taking in, you know, amazing stories. But then finally, you know, getting an apartment back in January. 
and having pretty much five months of just like space and being centered. And for the first time, I now had a foundation that like allowed me to focus on other areas of my life that I abandoned. When you're on the road, it's like, oh, got to catch a flight, got to figure out the booking, got to talk to the sponsor. There were all these other things. And now I have the foundation of like stability. Like, oh, look, you're sleeping in the same bed every single night. You don't have to worry about any bookings. Like you're here. And so I think I've fed my spirit so much and I genuinely love myself. Like that, that journey of self-work wow. and self-love, I genuinely enjoy my own company. I genuinely love who I'm becoming. I love who I am. I love the journey that I'm on. And I think when you get to that place of self-love, you want other people to have that for themselves. And so you lead with more compassion, you lead with more gratitude, more patience, more understanding. And it's taken me years to get here, but it feels really good to be here. And you're single. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Do you like being single? <laughs> that was... I don't mean we should do a shout out to fix that. I'm just in curious about, <laughs> about that. I'm going to drink some water. <laughs> because um, it's so funny. It, it, it's, I'll be honest. I'm so open about so many aspects of my life that I yeah. told myself the one aspect that I would keep to myself was my dating life. Um, yeah, yeah. But I, am, I do talk, I am openly single. And um, I think the blessing in that is that it wasn't intentional until about like, again, growing up or just, you know, seeing your friends constantly boot up, everyone's got a partner. You're like, what's wrong with me? Like, why can't I get someone? Or why am I attracting, you know, I don't want to say dysfunctional, but people that just weren't a match. Like the people that wanted me, I did not want them. Like we were not a good fit. Like what is going on? And, you know, last year I had, I had a really just wonderful relationship and it was so great. I think the best part of that relationship is that not a single person on social media knew about it. I told like five close friends and it was I encourage people who, especially if you have a public platform, not to bring your audience into your relationship. Right. <laughs> um, I think you're going to complicate it. It's going to add another dynamic that could get unhealthy. But it was right. such a beautiful journey because I was at a place where I was my healthiest and I was able to understand what it meant to be a girlfriend at this point in my life mm -hmm. because I am very independent. And I think with a lot of men, or at least the ones that I've spoken to very honestly about this, I'm, I'm very, um, I'm, an, I'm an alpha female, you know, I have a lot of energy. Um, and I also have an ability to love very immensely, very hard. Mm. And it, it, it's a force to be around. And I think um, it's not for everyone. And, you know, people use the word intimidating. You can call it intimidating or you can call it, um, unique or different, but it's not meant to be easy to, to match with. And so I, I really enjoy holding out on, uh, you know, I, I, and, and I, I, I've met some incredible people. And I think what I love now is that right away, I can probably tell, because, because one thing about me, I don't like to waste time. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, you know, if I feel like it could work, like, let's give it a shot. If I don't, it's like, you know, let's, let's not waste anyone's time here. So um, I'm at a point in my life where, you know, I'm dating to marry. I'm dating to, you know, find a life partner. So um, I much rather be single than waste time dating for fun, you know. And again, this is not to say that everyone should have the intent because marriage isn't for everyone you know mm. not everyone's out there looking to get married mm. um, but i think if you if you recognize what you want and you don't want to settle or compromise or you know well you know relationships take a level of compromise but um i'm rambling can you tell how uncomfortable I am? <laughs> i'm just being quiet letting you just go for it We'll, we'll, we'll edit out any bits that we don't want later. I'm fascinated no, I, because, because um, I'm interested because I wonder, um, you know, we're talking to single people over the years, especially single women, um, 
do you get lonely? And has that been an issue in your life? Yo, which is so it's funny. Amazing. I, I think that that assumption is very society. Right. Like, right. I, I think people assume like, oh, what poor girl. Like she must, you know, wow. Like, I, I, I hope she's, oh, I'm like living my best life. And I think that's the reason I share those videos in the Maldives. I'm like, y'all, I genuinely love myself. <laughs> like, I much rather, because there are people in relationships that feel alone. If I'm going to feel alone, I want to be alone, you know? If you're going to be with someone that makes you feel like you're not supported, you're going to be with someone who's intimidated by your presence, who is, you know, scared of you being more successful than them. Um, I've been with men who, you know, the idea that I make more money than them is like, oh, it, it's a lot. And I, I never want to emasculate anyone, but I can't control whatever you interpret from my lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. Insecurity is like, you know, men have asked me, okay, so how many men DM you? I was like, <laughs> what? Like, you can tell that, you know, if you have a platform or if you have this lifestyle, they have already formed an opinion about who you are, what you do. And right. so I have to be very, like, cautious. I'm like, well, whatever you're projecting or whatever you're assuming, like, you know, and another thing that I think makes dating hard in particular with a, a public blog and a public platform is that you know in the past someone has like read up on my entire life and we're going on a first date and i'm like they're telling me my life story and i'm like can we organically get to know each other yeah. <laughs> like i can't hide you know my life which is why i don't want you know I definitely don't want to date like someone who reads or follows or knows about my life because I would love to just get to know someone on a very organic level. Mm. Interesting. Um, uh, I won't keep you much longer, but what do you like with money? What's your relationship with money become as you've got more money? Are you a spender? Are you a saver? Uh, do you worry about money always flowing into your life? Do you, what, what's your relationship with money like at this stage of your life? Yeah, that's a good question. So before I talk about this stage, I'll talk about um, the earlier stages because again, yeah. when you don't grow up with money, right. you assume, because that's what you see, um, that money is scarce. And so yes. I have this idea that like, oh, there's not much money in the world. Like I always see, you know, my parents are struggling, you know, bills aren't being paid. Like I, I can see that money is this thing that there's not much of. And I think, again, as an entrepreneur, being able to make $5 here, $10 there as a teenager, I was like, okay, I, I can see how I'm making it work, but I see my parents. So I still think that there's not much out there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when you start getting to a point, I think the first year I made six figures with my blog was 2017. Mm -hmm. And then last year, times that by five. And then mm -hmm. this year, I'm pace to do my first seven figure year. And so I had to relearn how to view money as something that's not evil because I right. saw what money did to my friends who were also successful. And I was like, okay, I can see how money kind of corrupted them. I can see how money got to their head. I can see, how, you know, and I'm just observing like, okay, I don't want that. I don't want to be that. I don't want to look like that. So I was just kind of like taking notes of like what I saw money do for other people. And I think for a long time, I just kind of was like, I don't trust myself to be responsible with this. So I was donating, giving it away, investing. I didn't like it in my bank account because if it's there, I'm like, oh, it's like more than I know what to do with. God, is, I would look, I, I would remember some of my prayers would be like, God, if you want me to give this to someone, can you reveal who it is? <laughs> Just, good job you didn't post that. <laughs> What's up? A good job you didn't post that. Yeah. <laughs> that would have gone viral. <laughs> this was last year, my goodness. This this was last year when I was dealing with a lot of just like there was so many highs and lows as well because you don't plan for oh actually I, I heard this um Iverly uh, a friend I recently made on Instagram, she did a podcast where she talked about like, we hustle and we dream board and we vision board and we plan for success. And then when it comes, we're like, no, God, it's too soon. Like, are you sure, God, you really want to be that, you know? And I think that's what happened with me last year because I didn't plan, I maybe planned to do maybe a quarter million, 
So when I had a 500K year, I was like, Ugh. like I just started to feel sick and I got really anxious and I didn't know who to trust and I didn't know how to spend it. And, and you know, people were asking for favors and all of a sudden you don't know who wants you for you or you for your resources and your money. Right, right. And yeah. it does make you paranoid. It does make you reevaluate friendships and, and figure out like, you know, okay, who do I want to join me in this next chapter of my life? And I yeah. was talking about this the other day, but you know, as you upgrade your life, you do need to upgrade your network because I never want my struggles to, because again, my struggles are so privileged. Oh mm. my God, what do I invest in? Like, yo, like I'm so successful. What do I do with my money? Like if I ever come across like that to someone who's struggling, so uh, uh, yeah, it's just, just, you don't want that to be a conversation. So when I started having those money problems, those money mindset problems, I had to go to my friends who were also doing really well and say, hey, do you also feel this? They're like, oh my gosh, yes, read this book. Oh my gosh, wow. listen to this podcast. Like, it's so comforting to know that you're not alone, no matter what level you're at, because your problems don't go away. They just get more complex. But you don't have a problem spending on yourself. You know, it's interesting. A lot of people like, okay, so a lot of this, so this jacket was gifted. This is from Amazon. These are 99 cents on Amazon. <laughs> I have always been very like trendy and thrifty because yeah. as I'm one girl of, uh, there's four girls in the family. A lot of my clothes were hand-me-downs. So my sisters and I went to the same school and I didn't want people to make fun of us for sharing clothes. So when I wore something that belonged to her, I would have to like put it inside out. Instead of making it a dress, I would make it a shirt and wear jeans on top of it. So I've always been really trendy and stylish. And I think right now, like, you know, I don't, in the context of travel, like a lot of my travels are still sponsored. Um, a lot of what I do is like, I'm very smart. I, I actually, I'll spend more on other people than on myself. Like <laughs> you could ask my friends, like I do not sure. like, Spend money on myself. Um, right. I'm very privileged that, um, like, you know, in London, my apartment is sponsored there. So it, it, it's really great to have, you know, yeah. to have built up this travel career because you can still work with, you know, like the Maldives Villa, you know, they hooked it up. And mm. this, this is a place that's like a thousand, you know, dollars a night. Sure. So yeah. I'm very blessed to have those opportunities right. to stay in really uh, nice places and. Uh, not have to pay for it. That's very cool. Love that. Um, <laughs> listen, are you up for some quick fire before we go? Oh, no, I've got, we can, let's go. go All right, here we, I've got 10 of these for you. So these are quick fire, but they may be quite slow fire, depending how they hit your brain at this stage of the day. Okay, pool or ocean? Ocean. Eating in or eating out? Eating out. Dancing alone or together? Together. <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty good alone. You need to be careful who you get involved in that. They may cramp your style. <laughs> I know, very true. <laughs> what books are on your nightstand? Ooh, so I have Dance by a Riot Mountain Dreamer, a Millionaire Messenger by Brennan Burchard, and The Call by also by a Riot Mountain Dreamer. Very cool. Yeah. Um, when's the last time you wrote a handwritten card or letter to someone? Two months ago. It was actually, it never got sent though. It's sad. I, I wrote it to someone for their future self. So it hasn't been sent yet. Wow. Well, that's pretty recent though for most people to have done that so recently. <laughs> okay. Weirdest or most unusual gift you've received? Probably a wooden penis. <laughs> Hope that didn't come from a guy. <laughs> oh. What the hell? That's pretty unusual. Yeah, you probably, yeah. To say that was like no warning, that clearly has marked you for life, that gift. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you could be teleported anywhere in the world right now. Where are you going? Mars. Well, that's cheating because it's outside the world, but I'll give you it because... Uh, okay, 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 actually, New Zealand. New Zealand. Actually, that might be possible not far from now, so yeah, you're okay. Um, a friend of mine called Ray Panthaki, who's an actor, I just did a podcast with him, it's out this week, it's just his Netflix block was just coming out with um, Hilary Swank, 
they just filmed it. It's called Away. The first man mission to Mars is what it's about. So you could be one of the early passengers. There you go. Sick. All right. You can trade places with anyone for 24 hours, past or present. Who would it be? Oprah, just to see what it's like to have that much power. I don't want it, oh. just to see. <laughs> Great answer. What always makes you laugh? Oh. I'm laughing all the time, so I'm just... I I guess, That's why it's okay. difficult for you. Oh. I'll say, I laugh at myself, so I'll either say my own jokes or uh, champagne. Laughing at your own jokes while drinking champagne, to me, is a great night in. I'm quite cheap. <laughs> All right, number 10, finally. Most grateful for in 2020? Oh, health. Health and uh, I'll say space as well. Um, quarantine, and I, again, I'm very cognizant to how stressful and traumatic coronavirus has been to people's businesses. Um, for me, it was a silent blessing because I was set to go on an international tour. I was running retreats. I had all these things that I thought my business needed or I thought I needed to just keep up with because it worked last year, do it again. Right. And having that time to like truly think, I'm like, wait, do, do I want to do, like, does this make sense for my business? Like, is this how I want my brand to continue to be run? Because now that like my platform is expanding, I want to create more like high value, low touch, you know, because a lot of my high offers are high touch, high value. It's in-person retreats, it's in-person events. But I want to be able to low ticket offers that offer a lot of value, but it's less touch. So I don't have to, you know, be on Zoom calls with them or meet them. In right, meetings. right. And I think that's where you make the biggest impact. Yeah, very cool. Hey, listen, how can people find you, Glow, and, uh, and connect with you? Just say a little bit about where people can connect with you across the range of what you do and what, the, of, what you're offering, some of the courses you do. Yeah, to, so I, I guess the simplest uh, way to say it would be Instagram is where I pretty much post everything. So Glow Graphics, G-L-O Graphics. Um, if you want to find me on Facebook where I post more articles and in-depth uh, conversations, I'm the blog abroad, and yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> well, listen, you have been a joy ever since I met you, and as I say, I love your energy, I love your voice and what you're doing. I think it's so important, and you do it so well, and uh, I want to thank you for your time and you're coming on the podcast with me. People are going to love this conversation. <laughs> Thank you for being present. Thank you for your San Francisco background. <laughs> little hostage one. And um, sending much love and blessing to you. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And I'll speak to you soon. Sounds good. All the best. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you so much, Paul. Thank you for taking the time to listen to Paul Scanlon's podcast channel. We just wanted to remind you about the free course that's available to you on the five behaviors of successful people. So go and head over to paulscanlon.com forward slash free course to sign up for that today. And please do subscribe, share and review this podcast channel.